We may have seen the last GOP debate. I don't know. Rick Santorum was weak, and it's and I think Rick Santorum was nervous. I don't know if you watched much of this thing. It was it was kind of a waste of time. Rick Santorum went in, I guess, nervous because he expected to be attacked as this kind of incredible guy who is surging from behind all of these people. He he's behind them, and all of a sudden he's trying to pass them and be in front of them. And he was very sweaty at the debate. I guess uh, I guess surging from behind Mitt Romney is tough work because the guy was was shiny like I've never seen before. Really? Maybe he was just coked up or something no no he's a man of god right oh, right uh romney is rising in michigan so that seems to be happening simultaneously and john king was the moderator of this debate on cnn completely passive with the republican warmongering take a listen to this clip when they were talking about iran and he is just completely unaffected sure uh, i mean just i'll play this for you and it's and it's really incredible and i think the best example I want to make this clear, Lewis, because I get so much hate from the Ron Paul fanatics. Let's all listen to what Ron Paul says here. I think what we're, we're coming into this is the three non-Ron Paul candidates have given their warmongering ideas about Iran. And then John King goes to Ron Paul. And Ron Paul says the following. I agree with Ron Paul here. This is something, this is one aspect. I won't vote for the guy, but one aspect of Ron Paul I can get behind. Rivals here make a passionate case. That all three of them make a passionate case that this is a vital U.S. national security interest. But you disagree. I disagree because uh, we don't know if they have a weapon. Matter of fact, there's no evidence that they have it. There is no evidence. Israel, Israel claims they do not have it, and our and our government doesn't. I don't want them to get a weapon, but I think what we're doing is encouraging them to have a weapon because they feel threatened. If you look at a map of, uh, if you look at a map of Iran, we have 45 bases around their country plus our submarines. The Iranians can't possibly attack anybody, and we're worrying about the possibility of one nuclear weapon. Now, just think about the Cold War. The Soviets had 30,000 of them, and we talk to them the soviets killed a hundred million people and the chinese and we worked our way out of it and if you want to worry about nuclear weapons worry about the nuclear weapons that were left over from the soviet union they're still floating around they don't have them all detailed okay so there is actually one thing in there that i disagree with which is the idea that uh that that iran wouldn't would only want a nuclear weapon because we're making them afraid. That part I actually do disagree with. But the Ron Paul argument here is actually brilliant, which is Leon Panetta said, we, have, we actually don't think they have a weapon or are even that close to getting one. And uh, I, I think we found something I agree with Ron Paul on. I mean, Natan, what's your thought? Uh, I disagree with Ron Paul. Um, I mean, I, I don't know about whether Leon Panetta is right or wrong, but there's plenty of evidence coming from Israel that this program is serious and... Uh, his argument that, you know, oh, the Russians and the Chinese kill a lot of people, too. Why should we worry about one weapon? Well, that may be true, but one weapon in the hands of a government like Iran's is incredibly dangerous to Israel, which is a sworn ally of the U.S., and the entire area. A bunch of Arab countries don't want them to have the weapon either. So I disagree with him. Lewis, what do you think when you hear Ron Paul's statement? Um, <clears throat> for the most part, I agree with it. Okay. I, I think uh, I have no faith in our intelligence, but I do have plenty of faith in Israeli intelligence. Of course, Israel is also right there. So I think they've got a, a pretty good grasp on, on what Iran's capabilities are. So you and simply I, disagree with what Ron Paul's saying about how close Iran is to a weapon. You just disagree with that. You think it's not they, true. They may be close to a weapon, but um, I think what, what we're talking about, what he's talking about in terms of scale is absolutely true. They're close to one weapon. And I think it's, it'd be pretty easy to leave it to Israeli special forces or U.S. special forces to get rid of that one weapon in that one location that it might be at. Um, I, I don't think we need to be talking about uh, war in any way, shape or form. OK, I do agree with you guys that it doesn't matter how many weapons we're talking about. That part I agree with. I guess I guess you guys are kind of chipping away at what I even do agree with. What I agree with is Ron Paul painting the bigger picture about the hypocrisy in terms of who we decide to go after and who we don't, which we've known for a really long time when the explanation for U.S. intervention is the well-being of the citizens. We ignore a lot of places that have no oil, and there's plenty of bad being done to the citizens there. And here, when we're just looking at the number of nuclear weapons someone may have, that alone is also not a good barometer. Right. But I think good, good discussion overall.